Hey, we'd like to welcome you guys for showing up today. Thank you for coming to uh, see Dr. Kim Berry present uh, this diet to you, um, proper human diet. My name's Scott Reed, and uh, the reason I'm up here talking to you right now is because I have done the diet that uh, you can find on Dr. Kim Berry's YouTube page. He also has a website. Um, but I was 503 pounds. You can see over there, no neck, Tommy no neck. Uh, that picture's not doing me justice since it's widened, but anyways, you can see what I am now. I'm at 360 pounds now. I've lost 143 pounds on this diet. It took uh, right about a year to do so, but uh, anyways, uh, I'll just move on here and, and give, the sh give the show back over here to Dr. Barry, and he's going to explain the proper human diet to you, and then after he's done, I'll, uh, I will talk to you briefly about how you can do this diet while you're in the truck and on the road. Thank you. a good man right there. What's left of him? Tell me when you want the slide to change. All right. I don't, I don't have any slides. Um, we're going to be ready for some Q&A in 10, 15, 20, something like that. Oh, good morning, guys. Thanks for coming. Everybody that actually need, needs to be here right now is over at the food court. So that's okay. That's okay. So what if I told you that you and every trucker here has been fed a load of crap. All of us have, our entire life, about what we should eat and what we should not eat. And the reason I know that is because I used to believe the load of crap, and I used to teach it to my patients. And I was uh, 67 pounds heavier and pre-diabetic, severe reflux, and all kinds of other medical issues that we won't get into. And I'm a country boy. You may have noticed I'm a redneck. And where I come from, you can't be a mechanic if your car won't start. Nobody's going to listen to you. Nobody's going to take advice from you about what they should do about their car if your car won't start. That's common sense, right? You're not going to go and get your hair done by somebody whose hair is janky. That'd be dumb. You just know better than that, right? So why do so many people take nutrition and healthcare advice from fat doctors? That was the question I asked myself when I looked in the mirror when I finally realized, dude, you're severely obese. You're pre-diabetic. You're supposed to be the guy that knows what to do. And you can't even do it for yourself. That's an uncomfortable place to be for a common sense country boy. You're supposed to be the expert, and you don't know. That's embarrassing. So I had to fix that. And on my journey to fix that, I did a lot of reading, a lot of research, a lot of study. And what I've come up with are some basic principles of a proper human diet that not only help you lose weight, like Scott, but also help you reverse type 2 diabetes, also help you lower your blood pressure, help you reverse fatty liver, help skin conditions, joint conditions, mental health conditions. All these things get better when you stop slowly poisoning yourself with the foods that are advertised in your face all day, every day. So there's some basic principles I want to go over with you. And with these principles, what they're going to do is basically make you bulletproof. Okay? There's three steps to adopt a proper human diet and then some basic principles that you have to remember. And that way... The next time you go to a restaurant, any restaurant, the next time that you go to a fast food joint, the next time you go to, that you, you pack food for your trip, the next time you go to your mama's house, you're going to know exactly what you should eat as a human being and exactly what you should leave alone. Now, I'm a, I'm a sheep rancher in addition to being a doctor and a YouTuber, and I'm out with the sheep all the time on the farm, and it's amazing to me, the sheep just intuitively know what to eat and what they don't, what, what they should not eat. And I'll watch them. They'll walk up to a weed and sniff it, walk away. Beautiful green succulent leaves, but they just know I don't, that, I'm not going to eat that. That's not good for me. Then they go over to a bush. To me, the bush looks exactly the same. It's a weed, and they'll tear every leaf off that. They know intuitively. How is it that we are the only species of mammal on the planet 
that doesn't know better, that doesn't know what we're supposed to eat? Why are 80% of U.S. adults metabolically unhealthy? Why are 40% of people obese? Why is there a type 2 diabetes epidemic? Because we've been misled. We've been fed a load of crap. Because there's plenty of money to be made off selling crap food to people. But then on the other side of that, <clears throat> when the crap food, which is basically a slow poison, when it's had time, a few years to work, then there's money to be made on the other side with prescriptions, doctor's appointments, and surgery, right? So basically, where it leaves you is, you're a, you're a cash cow. Big food corporations make money off you, and then, then big medicine and big pharma make money off you. They make money as you come in and as you go out. So with all that, those billions of dollars, do you, there's really no financial incentive for them to tell you about a proper human diet. That's why you're having to hear it from me at a truck show. So, if currently you have no idea what's a proper human diet, I'm gonna give you three steps to get started. Step number one is eliminate all sugar from your diet. Both added sugar for sure, and then also naturally occurring sugar. Sugar needs to be a rare treat, a rare occurrence. There is no place in your diet for daily sugar of any kind. It's gonna to lead to hyperinsulinemia, inflammation, and chronic disease. Step number, number two is to remove all grains from your diet. There is no grain on the planet that is healthy for human beings. Wheat, rice, oats, corn, millet, soybean, amaranth, quinoa. These are great foods to keep you from starving to death. But if what you're trying to do is optimize your health and reverse chronic health conditions, they play no role whatsoever. In fact, before about 12, 13,000 years ago, human beings never ate grains, ever. Step number three is to remove all vegetable seed oils from your diet. Canola oil, corn oil, soybean oil, all of the seed oils. These are not the fats that you should be eating. Human beings have been eating animal fats for 99.99% of our time on this planet. That's what we evolved to eat. That's what our physiology knows what to do with. Beef tallow, bacon grease, sheep tallow, duck grease, fats from animals. Those are the fats that human beings eat. Those are the fats that give you your best health. If you're eating plant butter, that's false advertising. Plants don't make no butter, okay? Butter comes from milk fat. If you're eating vegetable shortening or any of that stuff, Crisco, all that stuff is going to cause inflammation in your body. So that's, that's three steps. That's all you have to do. Now let's talk about the principles of a proper human diet. Principle number one is ancestrally appropriate, which means we've been eating that food for more than 15,000 years. If you look at something, and you don't have to be an archaeologist or an anthropologist to know this, if you buy something and it's in a, a cardboard box or a plastic bag, do you think we were eating that 15,000 years ago? No. No. We were eating meat, mostly meat, and some veg. Okay? Meat was the food you tried to get every single day, and if you couldn't get the meat, then you would eat some veg. When the berries were ripe, of course you ate those. When you found a honey tree, of course you ate that. But on a daily basis, we stuffed our bellies with fatty meat. If we found a nest of eggs, we ate them all, probably including the shell. So a proper human diet is ancestrally appropriate. That doesn't mean, so anytime you see an ad, new from Kellogg's, that's bullshit. That's them trying to make money off you on the front end so the medical and big pharma can make money off you on the back end. That's all that is, okay? If it comes from a company, that has huge factories and cargo ship stuff all over the world, that's not real food. Kellogg's, Kraft, General Mills, Post, Kraft Heinz, Mondelez. If there's, there's literally nothing they make that is real human food. 
There's 10 corporations that basically feed the world. And they're not feeding you real food. They're feeding you a load of crap. A proper human diet is by definition low in carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are great to keep you from starving to death, but nobody in this room is in danger of starving. Okay? A proper human diet is high in healthy animal fats and high in healthy animal proteins. That's what all humans, regardless of what country you come from, regardless of what language you speak, you are a homo sapiens sapien. That's what you are. Okay? The, the, the two people in this room that are the most distantly related, you, know, you look around and find somebody that looks nothing like you. You two are more closely re related than average animals in the wild. We are very, very closely related as a species, even though we look very different. A proper human diet, by definition, is uninflammatory. So many people, when they start the diet that Scott's typically on, they'll say, you know, I used to have this knee, man. It just tore me up. It was stiff and hurt. And since I've been eating this way, my knee's way better. Does this diet do that? Or they'll say, you know, I used to have this terrible skin condition, psoriasis, eczema. Those are just slow poisonings. That's what that is. You don't have eczema. The food you're eating is giving you eczema. A proper human diet is uninflammatory. It doesn't cause inappropriate inflammation. 95% <clears throat> of all the inflammation any of you guys in this room are suffering from, whether it's in your joints, in your gut, on your skin, or mentally, is caused by the foods that you're eating that are not really foods. Now, Scott's been doing this for a few months and has noticed quite a, quite a change in multiple things. The number on the scale for sure, but many other things that he could tell you about, and he's happy to tell you if you ask him. I would love to be able to take some questions from you guys, because very often a question from you I can use to answer a, a question that many people have. So if anybody has a question, are you guys going to bring around mics? Can you do that? Or do you want them to, what do you want them to do? Audio engineers not listening to the audio. No, I'm saying if people have questions, do you want them to come to a mic or? Yeah, okay, all right, good deal. Good deal. <clears throat> oh, they're here. Yeah, I didn't even see them. Okay, so if any of you guys have a question, including the audio engineer, just come to the mic and I will happily answer your question and use your question to help other people. That's kind of what I do for a living now. Any questions? I have a question. All right, beautiful. All right, so my name is Roman Smith. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, the, the meat diet, right? My whole thing about that is the way that meat and things is processed yep. nowadays with the antibiotics, with the lab meat. So take, you know, taking that into account is like how do you – it's, even with organic, it says organic, but it still has plenty of toxins in it. So yeah. how can you ad adopt that into your diet? That's when a great question. So many people would say, wait a minute, I, meat, I've, I've heard that meat's full of antibiotics, full of steroids, full of all kinds of stuff. And indeed, there are confinement feeding operations that are not well run, that the animals are severely mistreated. There's absolute truth. But meat has this magical ability to turn things that humans cannot eat into healthy meat. Now, there are grades of quality of meat. There's no doubt about that. But so that if you took the average cow in a feedlot that's just fed soybeans and corn, stuff that a cow should never eat, they, they grind up Skittles, food waste. They feed them everything, uh, expired dog food. That, so when that cow eats that, they have this magic rumen. They have a four-chamber stomach that they're able to break that crap down in. And it goes through a membrane, kind of like reverse osmosis. And then it goes to their liver, which breaks out a lot of the toxins and gets rid of it. Then it goes through their kidneys, which gets rid of even more toxins. And then finally it gets into their bloodstream, and then when it goes into their cells, it goes through a fourth membrane. 
And each time it goes through that, a membrane, it gets more and more pure. So by the time you get to the fat and the, and the protein that you're going to eat, even if that, that cow's been fed the worst diet in the world and given all kinds of steroids and, and toxins and antibiotics, that meat is still 1,000 times cleaner than anything you can buy from, from Kraft Heinz or General Mills or Kellogg's. Because when you eat the, the ground up wheat and, and corn and soybeans, all that was sprayed with glyphosate. And they don't rinse that off. That gets in the finished product. And there's been multiple articles, multiple studies where they, every time they test any cereal, there's glyphosate in there. There's all kinds of toxins in there. But as long as they keep it below a certain level, the federal government says it's legal. You know how the federal government is. If you got enough lobbyists to take enough congressmen to dinner, you can get anything legalized and approved, can't you? And so there are some meats that are not perfect, but I would suggest that the cheapest, worst meat that you can buy is healthier for you than the most organic, non-GMO sugar, grains, vegetable, seed oils that you can buy. Okay? Does that make sense? The, it, meat, the, the cow just doesn't take what they're fed and stick it on their butt, and then that becomes a steak. It goes through multiple purification processes in the cow, in the sheep, in the chicken. Now, chicken and pork are not quite as clean as ruminant meats, because remember I said they have that four chamber stomach. So sheep, beef, uh, depending on where you're at in the world, caribou, reindeer, camel, uh, water buffalo, bison, all that, that's a ruminant animal. And they have extra cleansing steps in their digestion process that they're able to filter out the vast majority of crap and leave you with just healthy animal fat and healthy animal protein. Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> good morning. My name is Daniel. Uh, steak and eggs this morning for breakfast. Uh, steak and two eggs. Two-year carnivore. Um, I have a question about sugar. How long is people going to expect to re uh, get, lose their addiction of sugar? It took me. I'm still, re I'm still fighting with it, but yep. the sugar is one of the – I've been eating it since I was a baby. Yeah. And sugar – how, how long can we expect to yeah. break the addiction? So this guy has been eating steak and eggs only for two years, and he's not dead. Right? And I bet if you talk to him, you'd find that his health is substantially better than it was before he started this way of eating. And he brings up a very interesting question, addiction, sugar addiction. So first of all, sugar addiction is very real. Okay, when you eat sugar, it lights up the parts of your brain that are lit up by when you smoke crack or when you snort coke, smoke a cigarette, drink alcohol. <clears throat> Those light up the same pleasure centers as sugar. Okay, now, remember sugar and grains. When you eat grains, when you start to chew them up, a piece of bread, some cornflakes, you, do you, are you aware that they start changing because they're full of starch? And as soon as you start to chew that, you have an enzyme in your saliva called amylase that starts to break that starch down into sugar before you even swallow it. Did you guys know that? All plants, any carbohydrate is made of sugar. There is no exception to that. They are all break down ultimately into sugar. So whether you're eating broccoli or whether you're eating uh, Lucky Charms, they ultimately break down into sugar. Now, broccoli is way less bad for you, and in some cases very good for you, versus Lucky Charms. Lucky Charms has way more sugar. But it is absolutely a fact that people can become addicted to sugar, to carbohydrates, to starches, because it hits your pleasure center in the brain. Okay? That donut from Dunkin's, that's going to hit your brain. That's, that's a pleasure hit, just like if you smoke something you shouldn't be smoking. That'll make you lose your card. Okay? So most people notice when they go keto or ketovore or carnivore that their sugar addiction becomes much less severe. Initially, it's rough. It's withdrawal for three to 14 days, just like if you quit alcohol. So imagine him, as a baby, his mama started giving him a little bit of Jack Daniels, just to calm him down, as a baby. 
And all his life growing up, he was, he was given little Jack Daniels every day. By the time he's this age, he's, a, he's an alcoholic 100%, right? So then if you take him to detox and you break his alcohol habit, is he, is he just never going to crave alcohol again? He's been given alcohol since he was an infant. He's going he's gonna to be an alcoholic the rest of his life. And that's what we have to realize is we've all been misfed. We've all been misled. We've been fed a load of crap. And everybody in this room is a sugarholic. You are. Now, for some of us, those cravings are much stronger. And for some of us, for me, I could care less if I ever eat anything else with sugar in it the rest of my life. I've been a carnivore for almost four years. Meat and eggs, that's what I live on. And I'm not dead. I used to weigh 297 pounds. Now I hang out at about 225. And I'm happy with that. I reversed my prediabetes, reversed all the other medical things. I feel better now at 54 than I felt when I was 34. Now, what other diet can make you say such ridiculous things as that? So a proper human diet, there's a spectrum. I said it's low carbohydrate, right? So if you want to eat a low carb diet, that's a great place to start. For many people, that's all they need to do is eliminate the sugar and the grains. And just eat meat and veg, a few nuts, a few berries. That's low carb or that's keto. If, you, if you're like, no, I still got to lose more weight than you do what Scott did, you turn down the carbohydrate intake knob even more and you eat keto vor, which is 10 total grams of carbs a day. Just enough for a little spice and seasoning. And then some of us, like me, have to turn down the carbohydrate intake as far as they can get it, as close to zero as possible. That's a carnivore diet. That's meat and eggs. And for many of us, that makes the sugar addiction go completely away. For others of us, it makes it much, much better. But every now and then, when we go to Mama's house and she's baked that damn coconut cake, or when you go to a restaurant and you smell those pancakes and syrup, just like this baby that's had alcohol every day of his life and is now a teetotaler, when you smell that, that smell of the bar, when you, when you hear the clink of the ice in the glass, that's going to call up the monkey, isn't it? That's going to call up the, the ghost of alcohol past, and you're going to have a craving. That's just part of, of being an addict. But the problem is now that the biggest food manufacturers are actually, you know, most of them used to be, the, the companies that own the food companies now, they used to own the tobacco companies. Were you aware of that? All the tobacco companies, when the writing was on the wall, you're going to go out of business. They basically divested and, and bought into to the big food manufacturers because they know sugar is addictive. And their, their model of profit is get them addicted and keep them fed. Used to be with cigarettes, now it's with cornflakes. Now it's with Lucky Charms. And I have a problem calling that food. Is that food, what's the definition of food? It's something that has nutrients in it, that helps you be healthy, that doesn't cause inflammation, that doesn't make you fat, that doesn't make you have mental health problems or skin issues. That's food. So is Lucky Charms, is that even food? I think that's... that's I think we should really start to use that word more carefully. Question? Yeah, just a couple minutes. Okay, all right. Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm Carla. I'm Scott's mom, and I'm very proud that he's going down this journey. Are you proud of this guy? Yes, I am. Um, one of the questions I've seen lately is they're talking about bacon being a processed food, and it's not good. Now, yeah. is there such a thing as the uncured bacon being better than the cured? Yeah, good question. So bacon, in any health article, any nutrition article, bacon is, is processed, right? Let's think about bacon. First of all, human beings have been preserving meat using salt. Do you know how long we've been doing that as a species? Yell out, what do you, what do you think, how long? 100 years? 8,000 years we've been using salt to cure meat. So let's talk about bacon. What it, how, how is it highly processed? Well, they, they, they slaughter the pig, they cut the slab of bacon off, they slice the bacon up into slices. They call it rashers over in the UK, rashers of bacon. 
and then they sprinkle some salt on it and they let it cure. That's the processing. But there's a difference between meat and, and, and plants that I, I'll try, I'll close with this and then I'll definitely take your questions if you have more. If you grind up a plant enough, it changes it, right? Because people say, oh, whole wheat, you know, that's good for you, right? And vegetables are good for you. But if you grind that up and you mess with it chemically and you wind up with Lucky Charms, guess what Lucky Charms are made out of? Wheat and oats. They're healthy. They're good for you. But if you grind them up too much, they're not good for you. <clears throat> now let's take meat. You can take meat from the worst fed animal on the planet and grind that meat up and add some spices and some sugar and some salt, and you got bologna. If, if one change you made when you walk out of this room, if you stopped eating all breakfast cereals and just started having eggs and bologna for breakfast, watch how your health gets better. Because you can't grind the goodness out of, out of meat. You can grind it up and make Vienna sausages. We call them viennies down in Tennessee. Is that what you call them? No? Viennies. You can make spam. You can make any of that stuff. And as long as you buy processed meat that is as low in sugar as possible, low in carbohydrates as possible, that meat's still good for you. And bacon, uh-uh. I've got a couple of videos on my YouTube channel about bacon. If you talk bad about bacon, we're not friends, number one. And number two, you don't know what you're talking about because we've been curing meat that way for over 8,000 years. That is not some new process that Kraft Heinz came up with for General Mills. Yes, sir. Um, Longtime fan. I've lost 120 pounds. 120 pounds right there. As a truck driver. I need, I need, I need. Okay, yeah, I got you. And um, we're, we're out of time. Uh, at what point in our history do you think that the food companies went from this is just a matter of processing to make it cheaper to now it's intentional to make us the cash cows? What point in our history do you think that that I think the, paradigm shift? I think the, the, the 1980s because that's when you see the obesity epidemic start, right? Late 70s, early 80s, that's when the, the big tobacco people with billions of dollars, that's when they started investing in big food because they saw the writing on the wall. Their attorney said, dude, they're gonna put y'all out of business. This is over. And they're like, well, we gotta find another addictive model. And then they started looking around and they said, oh, sugar. And then grains turn into sugar, sugar and sugar. So basically you're having sugar with sugar on your sugar. That's addictive. We're going to go with that. And I think you can see the, the rates of obesity going crazy. Uh, the USDA just said that Lunchables can now be considered a lunch at schools for children. So it's basically crackers and a little dessert, a tiny bit of meat, which is high, highly processed meat. So it's less good than unprocessed meat, but it's still, that's the only good thing on the tray. And, that, and some fruit juice. That's, that's what kids are now. So literally sugar, sugar with a side of sugar with some sugar on top. That's the, biz, that's the profit model. Now, Scott's got a few more things, and then we're both happy to take your, your questions. So basically, what we're talking about here is if you change your fuel, you change your life. You know, our bodies can only run off of two things. That's sugar and fat. Unfortunately, the way our bodies are wired, it has to use up all the sugar before it can use the fat. Now, for me, I don't need to cover what you've already talked about, but so... Full disclosure, I've been on this diet for about two years, and I did it in increments. Obviously, I would quit in the fall, and I would start back up towards the end of winter, just because with my family and friends, there's so many events and traveling going on between uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, different fall festivals and whatnot. It makes it kind of hard to follow the diet, plus, I ain't going to lie, I love peanut butter fudge. <laughs> but anyways, uh, and I like my pie. But so I would come off of it, I would lose weight, and, I, and, and during the course of that time in the winter, I would put, you know, 20, 25 pounds back on. But then when I would get back on it, then I would easily shred that weight. Um, now, quick, because we're out of time here, and I'll be fast. Um, some things you can do in the truck to do this diet is, uh, there's a couple different things. A, you can eat at the truck stop. Anybody that's in here that eats at a truck stop knows now that you can't leave the truck stop without spending 30 or $35 for one meal. So that's not really cost effective for most people. You can pre-prepare uh, your stuff. Um, my wife and I will we'll take a Sunday afternoon and we'll cook up hamburger and, and beef and different things 
uh, steaks and whatnot. We'll cook them up, pack them up. I'll put them in my fridge and my truck, and then I'll just microwave them. I know microwaving has got its own issues, but uh, I don't want to eat it cold. So uh, we do that, and then you know I cook eggs in the truck. There's things you can make in the truck. You can cook eggs in the truck. You uh, you can a lot of, a lot of truck drivers are putting air fryers in their trucks now. They actually make a microwave air fryer combo now that you can actually put in your truck and comes in underneath the 1500 watts so that you can use it in your truck with a 1500 water grater inverter. Um, another key to this success, and I'll just before a few tips. I had diabetes, my sugar was running 500 plus. When I would go get my physical, I would have to drink like five gallons of water for like two and a half days, two gallons at least the morning of, so that when I got to the doctor and I did my pee test, I was peeing with just water. And that's how I got my physical. Um, I have had other health issues. I've had pre-cancer, pre-cancer in my throat, and I can tell you the only way that we got rid of the pre-cancer was I changed my diet and stopped eating the stuff I was eating. In fact, the doctor even told me it wasn't the smoking that I was doing, which I don't smoke anymore. It wasn't the smoking that I was doing that caused the pre-cancer in my throat. It was, the, it was the acids in my stomach that was coming back up. I changed the way I was eating. Within six months, the pre-cancer was gone. The spots were off of my throat. Um, the greatest thing about this, though, is um, you want to... Even though it's two years, the whole process was literally right about one year of me losing 143 pounds. And I'm still losing weight. Um, now, if you're trying to exercise with this, I just learned this recently. If you're trying to exercise with this, I started lifting. And I've been lifting in the truck. I got a Volvo that I'm driving right now, so I got plenty of head space above me. I got kettlebells in the truck. I actually lift while I'm driving down the road. I mean, it's the middle of the night, ain't nobody out there. I'll grab it and I'll start doing some arm curls and pulling them up over my head and whatnot. Since I started lifting, I've noticed that my weight loss has slowed tremendously. However, even though my weight loss has slowed tremendously, in the last two weeks I've had to drill two more holes in my belt. And when I got this belt in October, I was on the first notch. Now I'm all the way over here. That's how much I've lost just since then. Um, and there's like two whole, three, three pant sizes now. So anyways, the, some people, they don't have the willpower. Obviously, when you do any diet, it takes a lot of willpower and it takes patience. Um, I will tell you, when I first started this, uh, it was about a month and a half, roughly. I stopped taking all diabetes medication. No more needles, no more insulin, no trulicity, no, no glipopride, any of that. Um, my sleeping is so much better. I'm more rested. I feel better. When I first got into the diet, it was a matter of three or four weeks, and I had to force myself to go to bed. My energy level went through the roof. I could drive uh, under the COVID exemption. Uh, I, was, I could drive for 20 and 22 hours. I literally had to pull myself over and force myself to sleep because I was just like, let's go, keep going. Um, but because of the fact that it takes that willpower, there are things that we at CDLDU would like to point you in the direction of and you can join either A, our pro driver community that we are organizing for anybody that wants to be on that. It's going to be a group of drivers, peer-to-peer -peer support group. I mean, obviously, when you're trying to quit smoking or quit drinking alcohol, when you, you know, a lot of people go to meetings, and it's a support meeting. And then people help each other. Also, Dr. Ken Berry has a couple of, uh, um, you got a couple different ones, like Patreon, and then you got your website, <clears> and uh, What's yeah, the YouTube, YouTube channel is probably the YouTube, best, most yeah. useful thing. I've got over 700 videos about every health topic you can possibly imagine. So if you just go to YouTube and, and type in Dr. Berry diabetes, Dr. Berry fatty liver, Dr. Berry obesity, Dr. Berry uh, hypertension, the videos will pop up, and you can watch them for free. And then at my, on my website, drberry.com, we have a private community of over 5,300 people, just like Scott, who said enough is enough, this is bullshit. I can't live the rest of my life sick and fat. And they basically have, have they joined for five bucks a month and we have all kinds of Q and A's and extra stuff we do with these people. And they're literally transforming their life, not with their doctor's help, but despite their doctor's help. 
which is not the way it should be and hopefully not the way it will be one day, but right now that's the way it is. And so uh, I think what you guys are doing is amazing because uh, you just walk around out here, you can tell truck drivers are not the healthiest people on average, right? And the YouTube videos is how I got started with Barry. In fact, I didn't even know he had a website or a Patreon until like six months ago. I just went through all the YouTube videos. That's what I would do. I'd watch them in the truck, listen to them in the truck, listen to him talk. But we are out of time right now. I apologize that we don't have a little more time to take that. But if you do have more questions, you can go to the pavilion, booth 74108, and that'll be the CDFDU booth. Dr. Barry will be there for a little while after, the, uh, after we get finished here. And if you'd like to go over there and ask any more questions, he'd be more than happy to answer them for you. And with that, thanks for coming. Uh, hopefully, if anybody wants to take part in uh, the proper human diet, there's plenty of resources and people to try to help you with that. Uh, I know we'll be happy to help you in any way possible with that, but uh, we wish you the best of success, and thanks for coming today. Thank you, guys.